from the Northwest Michigan Food and Farming Network. Um, we are considered a government-sponsored entity. Um, unfortunately, that's similar to Fannie Mae and Fred Mac, but we're nothing like them. We don't owe any debt to the, to the government. Uh, we are all self-insured to cover all of our loans. Uh, there's about 80 associations uh, nationwide. Uh, we are the sixth largest at 6.6 .6 billion. Um, there's four system banks. Uh, we have about 500 customers. Uh, 260 billion in total assets would put us about the 10th largest bank in the United States in whole. This is kind of the charter territory. Um, AgriBank is our parent bank. They kind of lend money to us, then we turn around and lend it. CoBank, uh, they do co uh, cooperative financing, Ag First along the eastern side, and Farm Credit Bank of Texas are the four funding type banks. And when I started here 13 years ago, there were about 103 associations and six um, chartered territory banks, and, and we're still consolidating, and I expect that to continue. Um, this is just the Agribank district. We are the largest district, uh, basically because we are in the heartland. Um, a lot of the I states there, they not as diverse as us, so they're not going to have very much fun the next couple of years with grain prices going down. These are where our 36 branches are located. As I mentioned, we cover this area up here, pretty sparse. We do a lot of driving. Uh, similar with UP, we only have one office up there. Obviously, the heart of agriculture is down in the lower part of the states, but that is moving north as well. Uh, overall, uh, we have 475 employees, 6.9 million, 23,000 customers, and our key thing, especially with what just happened yesterday on National Ag Day, we have returned $29 million of our profits to our borrowers. Basically, it effectively lowers their interest rate by a half percent at, at minimum. So, and we've been doing this since 2005, haven't missed a year, even when we had that downturn in 08, 09. Um, in 2000, there was five or six associations throughout the state of Michigan. We all came together to form Greenstone, based in East Lansing. Um, in 2003, we acquired um, northeast part of Wisconsin. They're about 400 million in size. They didn't add a whole lot to our growth, but they had a lot of capital that we needed. We were growing too fast, was our problem, and our capital couldn't keep up with us. Um, that's that 10.3 compounded growth rate. So we went from 1.6 billion to 6.6 .6 billion during that time, that 13 years, it increased our customer base, lowered our cost of delivery to our customers. Uh, we are one of the cheapest deliveries of all the associations. We're third cheapest in the way we deliver a dollar. Um, and then our financial services is also a growing part, which is the crop insurance and tax and accounting services that we offer to everybody. And starting this year, we're gonna start offering IT support to all our farmers. We have quite a vast IT department. This um, just shows you kind of how diverse the state of Michigan is. Our largest, obviously, is dairy at 22 and a half. That's decreasing as far as our portfolio size. There's less farmers, but they're larger. We still, um, it, it's only decreasing now because it is here in the state of Michigan. In fact, dairy is expected to have an additional 30,000 cows coming to the state this year. Um, cash crops is our second largest. And this is our fastest growing. And this is probably what you're most interested in. This is our part-time hobby farmer segment. Um, basically, in 2002, that didn't exist. And now it's one of our largest segments of our portfolio. Um, we also have, obviously, a, a number of different things. Did you say in 2002 it was virtually non-existent? Virtually. Um, we did a little wow. bit of, of home loans and stuff here and there in the country living. We are really just dabbling in it. Um, last year, our agri-consumer segment finally reached over a billion dollars in lent money. And we basically started from nothing. And I know you're going to finish, but in terms of that chunk, is it the criteria that, do they have, when they borrow, do they have to have crops or the potential? That's the key word, potential. Okay. Yeah, they have the potential to the USDA to produce $500 of gross farm income. Potential. Yeah. Can you point to where that is on the chart? Did you say, or it's not on there? It's in here. The 17.22 percent is is our fastest growing segment. That's our part-time oh, okay. hobby farmer type segment, or or agri consumers. We also include it. Um, it does, you know, rural homes. We actually break out of there. There's some people we can just lend to because you're in a rural enough area that we're allowed to do that. We typically don't do 
mortgage loans. We don't compete in the secondary market. We hold on to all of our own paper. Um, but we do a number of things. We also have capital markets that I'll show you, which you see eating places down here. Um, it's part of the food chain, so we try to make as much things eligible as possible. Um, looks like a lot on there that we do. We don't really have the number of services that a bank typically has. We're not a depository. Uh, one thing that is beneficial to customers right now is though if you have a loan with us, you can put money into funds held and then it earns 3% less than your interest rate on that loan and it's way more interest than you're getting in the bank. So a lot of people are depositing a lot of cash with us because they have a lot of cash. Uh, but we do tax planning, accounting services, appraisal, life insurance as well. Can you answer one quick question? Yeah. What's Ag Direct equipment lending? Ag Direct, that's kind of our trade finance arm. So if you go to a CAT dealership or a John Deere dealership, that's the branded product that we use to deliver that type of financing. It's real quick, simple. It's equipment loans in general. Loans right. about leasing? They do do leasing as well. Okay. Yep, yep, they do leasing. We have a couple arms. Um, in fact, Ag Direct is actually, we're part of that association. It's uh, housed out of our Omaha office, the Farm Credit Services of America. Um, so they do nationwide. We do this, and we are competing with John Deere on their, their credit terms. I, that I, arm, though, does not do patronage. I was I was sort of thinking you were saying lending as in it was a cooperative of people sharing equipment that would be awesome. <laughs> 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 you know, and all, you know. um, these are our market segments that we'll go to, and you'll see um, the next slide here with the traditional farmers. Young beginning small is definitely a, a major program for us. We are you know chartered to lend to that segment, and let's face it, I mean that's the only way we're going to stay in business if we bring back the young farmers to the, to, to the market or even starting out. Commercial producers does our largest segment, so basically those are $10 million loans and larger um, throughout the state of Michigan. Capital Markets does uh, syndicated finance, Tyson Foods, Kroger, Young Brands, those type of companies as well. They're large billion dollar facilities that many banks participate in. And then our country living residents, which is what I talked about before in our fastest growing segment is the part-time farmers. And how that is made up? As far as the number of customers, we have 12,000 agri consumer. Traditional is actually going backwards. That used to be about 55% of our portfolio. Commercial, which does the largest loan, there's only 693 of them. There are not many real large um, traditional customers here in, in Michigan and Wisconsin. And then capital markets just they only have 177 customers, but they get the large volume, as you can see with this next one. Um, they make up about 15%, even though they're less than 1% of our customer base. And then this is the heart of our um, portfolio, which is the traditional ad. That's the core of our business. And this is the part that's grown at our consumer segment. So typically, if they're not in our portfolio, there's very few of them that we really want in our portfolio. So we try to really consider ourselves a part of that, and it's really worked well for us. We've recovered well from babies. So um, what drives us? Um, our capital position, we're at 14.7%. You know, when we lend to somebody, we require them to have 50% equity. You know, we only have 14. Um, but the regulatory minimum is 7%. We expect that to increase. We're trying to get ours to 20. It just creates, it lowers our cost of funds because we don't have to borrow as much money and uh, puts us in a better position for when there is downturns, which in a commodity business, there's going to be. Um, you know, we, we look at companies that you know, do a good job of record keeping. I mean, we have to take numbers and people just write them out on a yellow piece of paper. It takes a long time to di dissect those and determine whether or not they're credit worthy or not. Um, you know, cash flow and working capital. We take land as collateral, but we don't require, that's not what pays back loans, it's cash flow and working capital. It helps them survive those risk downturns and then what it services the debt. And while everything's been going up, extremely well as far as land. We do expect that to weaken here going forward, especially with the grain prices. You can't pay $320 in rent for an acre and actually make any money. So that's definitely going to go down as well. Um, our four main common things, we do do specific industries of how, how we look at this, the owner equity, working capital, timber industry, they have negative working capital. They don't have it. They just turn cash every time. So they don't in that we have different under, underwriting standards for different markets that we're in, in industry segments. And then as mentioned, repayment capacity and loan to appraise value. Uh, we expect that the interest rates will be going up, inflation is going to go up, um, financial institutions are having new regulatory um, requirements. We decided that we were going to stay in the home loan game. Um, we've had other associations throughout the United States that would have all the regulation 
they're not, you can't get a home loan program anymore. They're done. And a lot of these smaller commercial banks are going to have the same problem. Um, so the process, you know, we have the initial meeting, the application, data gathering, credit analysis, and then we make a decision. Typically, depending on the size of the deal, we can get a decision made if we have good financials within about two weeks. Um, the stuff that we're looking for from them are historical profit loss, and it's the same stuff every other bank can look for. We do utilize credit enhancement tools, SPA, FSA, MEDC, which our um, CEO, Dave Armstrong, does sit on the MEDC board. Um, and obviously, we are the largest distributor of all the uh, disaster funds to the, to the fruit growers. Uh, kind of where we see ag going here, um, you know, since I moved up here, it's kind of been eye-opening of, you know, why is our part-time farm segment really growing? And, you know, there's not a lot of communities like I've seen in other parts of the state like is up here that have so embraced it, you know, all along the entire food chain, including the restaurants that even put the name of the farms on their menus. And that's just growing. And so we have to grow with that and adapt with that as well. Um, the other thing that's coming here is the food processing. We have the number of products we produce, while they're not the largest, as what, you know, other uh, states like California and such produce, we are at, at a point where we can, produce, we can fully utilize capacity of increased food, food processing here as well. Um, and these are our four values that, that we live by. Um, but that being said, I wanted to get into a couple things that I wanted to mention and then take, kind of take some questions. Uh, and Susan brought it up earlier of the potential to produce some throughput. Um, our eligibility, obviously the bona fide farmer, we can finance anything that they want. Um, our residential customers, we can finance their home, maybe their second home, depending on the acreage size. So our solar eligibility really tighten us down. Now, let's say you've got three acres and you're going to put up an acre of hops. You know what? You're completely eligible for anything you want to buy from us. Just because you might produce a throughput through a processing center. We just finally approved our first brewery in the state as well to take it through and make it eligible that way. Um, restaurants, we've done restaurants that uh, produce some of their throughput. There's another eligibility thing called similar entity. We have um, farmers that own restaurants, so they're directly eligible. So then we take that and go, oh, well, this customer is fully eligible to do this. Um, we have other people that are similar to that, so we'll make them eligible too. So <laughs> we do stretch our limits. Um, that being said, it all comes back to creditworthiness, and we're pretty tight on that. Um, we're not the most aggressive lender in the state by any means. Um, we're a conservative lender. Um, for a couple of reasons. Uh, commodity based business. If you don't have the working capital to survive a downturn, we need to build in some of those thresholds. We only lend 65% loan to value up front to borrowers because they need that 10% of capacity. We can go higher. We can, and we do. But we're not going to do it up front. They, they need to have a vested interest in there. And then if a downturn happens, then we're able to help them. We don't want to back somebody and back into a corner without any options when the downturns happen. Uh, other interesting things that we've done, uh, sawmills, you know, they, they buy some stumpage. They don't even own any land, typically. We've been able to make those eligible. Um, anybody who has some throughput in our CEO, or our Chief Credit Officer, Paul Anderson, is working on this. And I wouldn't say everybody's quite in agreement yet. He's working with FCA, our regulatory. Uh, but he says if you can produce a bottle of beer, well, if you have enough product to produce a bottle of beer, you're eligible for us. <laughs> so in that three-acre case, the Greenstone would fund the, the house and the land and the... And the equipment. Yep. Uh -huh. Yep. And the beer. And the beer. you got to be credit worthy. You know, we're not going to go do 85 or 100% loan to value. Um, that being said, and that's shared with Rob as well, that you know, USDA is kind of pushing this joint financing program. Basically, we could finance 51%. They finance 49 The borrower doesn't need anything. We don't really like that so much. We think the borrower needs to have some skin in the game so they're vested, they have a vested interest in there. Um, but it's almost like 100% guarantee versus the 90% guarantee that they have to pay for us. So that's something we're pushing, we're looking into. We think more people are going to fit in in their down payment assistance program, which requires just 5% down from the borrower. Um, so USDA is getting aggressive. The farm bill has helped. You know, Michigan, we feel, was mentioned basically on every single page we benefited from in that farm bill. Thankfully, we're really tight with Debbie Stabenow. Many of you are as well. Uh, so that's helped us too. And we see, you know, the row crops are going to hurt this year. And everything turns around, but we're diverse enough that we're able to weather it. And with 
our size of bank, like the USC, um, we're not going to let competition in either. <laughs> Just to be honest, there's people in there being uh, a little bit aggressive on rates and stuff, and we're big enough, they're not going to get in. So we would basically, till Chemical purchased Northwestern, we basically are the largest Michigan based bank that there is. Seen any movement or inquiries on any small food processing processing facilities? I have not seen any. This is like no. Nope. We'd like to see some. <laughs> and based on them. this, like your um, recent exposure to like uh, the 2020 fund effort and the other things that you see, you've seen going on in the community. Um, I'm just curious from your perspective what what you see sort of on the horizon as some of the opportunities for uh, roles that Greenstone might be able to play or that you've been discussing with others um, that you know maybe we haven't thought of or you haven't necessarily thought of uh, I wouldn't say that any of them are something we haven't thought of. Right. I would say a lot of it is something that we're not experts in and we were been timid to get into, so we are taking some steps to go meet with like the Farm Credit East. They're a little bit more progressive than, than we are. They're doing CSA type financing. Um, that being said, we also are involved in urban farming. We pro provided hoop houses right downtown for um, people that try to farm right in town. Uh, there's a huge development going on in the city of Detroit that we're involved with as well. Um, it doesn't always need to be rural, it needs to be farming for us to be involved with. Uh, but we need to get more comfortable with um, the smaller startups of, um, you know, a few acres and going to do a CSA or going to take stuff to the farm market. We're timid, to be honest, we're timid with those things. Um, but we're, we know that that's where the opportunity for growth is, so we're, we're working to get become experts. We don't typically like to lend into industries that we're not experts in. Um, let me just jump in and say one of the reasons we have been here is a conversation that Brian and I have been having about partnering more with some of the financial institutions because that's a critical element to us moving forward with our own goals here. And while you know Ben's work definitely sounds like a sales pitch to us, that's okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I think, and Brian, I want you to comment on this now, is uh, the work that's been done in the Farm Bill by Senator Stabenow, there's been some very clear indications that say part of that Farm Bill is tied to us collaborating with people like Ben and Greenstone in making this work happen. So this is not a sales pitch, it's part of a, uh, hey, can we be partners here? And how do we do this? And, you can yeah, fill well, that a it, bit more. it's a it's fresh on my mind because uh, many of you might have heard that the senator was back in Michigan um, yesterday and the day before. Um, she was in Frankenmuth on Tuesday. She and stayed at my house in the basement. And, she was <laughs> at and then she was in Grand Rapids uh, yesterday. And um, this particular visit, and I think she'll do others for other purposes. This visit was about the conservation title exclusively. She brought Chris Adamo, who many of you know as her chief of staff for the Senate Ag Committee, um, her chief of staff, period. And then Tina May did come along. She was the author or the lead on the conservation <coughs> title for the Senate Ag Committee. She is now, um, and this may be, this is something that we are all going to benefit from. She has now moved to Chief of Staff for the Deputy Secretary of USDA in charge of implementation of the Farm Bill. So she's in an extraordinarily um, strategic position in terms of helping Michigan. We were focused yesterday, um, the discussion went mostly to this new program in the Farm Bill that's called the Regional Conservation Partnership Program. and. Um, it's a, it's a very broad program, and what it has done is taken some past activities, and in particular activities that evolved in the Chesapeake Bay, and is now looking at applying them to other areas around the state. And the Great Lakes Basin is, is within a month or two, likely going to be named as a new special area of concern mm -hmm. under the Farm Bill. And um, 
that program, for the first time, the, N the NSCS and others are really taking a big risk and not dictating exactly um, all, they're, they're saying what, they, they want you to identify the problems under loose parameters and they want you to identify the solutions and there's both specific program money that we know all the rules to, like the easement dollars and equip and CSP tied to that, but there's also a hundred million dollars annually that's not tied to any specific NRCS existing program. It's simply tied to the regional conservation partnership program. So we've been engaged in conversations about this for a long time because it's been an element of many of the iterations of the farm, all of the iterations of the farm bill until we finally got one passed. But that's just some preface. It, that said, um, all of the, really the biggest message from the senator about the whole farm bill, and again, we were focusing on conservation, but that Michigan's on every page, and that was her goal, but also that they're trying to do business in a new way. They, they have to stretch dollars further. The, the one example they gave is that just between now and the 2008 Farm Bill, the USDA has a billion dollars less in administrative money than they had at the start of the 2008 Farm Bill. So they can't do business the way they used to anymore. They don't even have the manpower. So the the regional partnership program, just because I know that really well, one of the things it specifically says is that they want leverage with existing agribusiness entities, and they want creative financing um, uh, mechanisms, that they want um, leverage with private um, agribusiness entities and um, producers of all kinds, um, you know, then, and I think that it's fair to say that we're going to see that reflected whether you're applying for a beginning farmer and rancher grant or whether you're applying for anything else. If there's an opportunity to collaborate with entities like Greenstone, and as Ben said earlier, and we've visited several times, things like making sure that we have new, new growers in line, making sure succession is successful for families, that's critical to their business, but it's also critical to our goals. So we have shared interests, and um, there's really an opportunity to try to, to stretch those shared interests into, you know, whether it's things like even simple opportunities to work with entities like Greenstone and our other friends for things like letters of support for, for efforts that we might pursue, um, whether it's a, you know, a beginning farmer ranch, a uh, beginning farmer rancher grant or a, the, the kinds of uh, grants that uh, Jim has pursued in the past to support, uh, you know, our workshop and educational activities of the Get Farming program, all those kinds of things are going to have a bit of a new spin on them. So, hopefully, that helps. Some more questions. Uh, I'd ben? like to just expand yeah. on that partnership too a bit, and you know, our, our CEO is aware of Make Bay and wants us involved. Um, the sustainability series that Susan is spearheaded as well. It's just not stopping here. We're kind of taking those ideas and we're actually sharing them with my counterparts and we're discussing them in Lansing and trying to get other parts of the state to do similar things that you guys are doing. So we're here learning from you guys too, just the same. But, you know, what else we can do? I'm going to need your help with that because this is a little bit new for us. <laughs> well, and for example, Ben has offered to work with us. Many, many of us have, Rob and I and Nikki and others have been working on um, Jim previously, Susan, on setting up a really more in-depth succession planning um, session for families and fortunately we pushed that off to November and that gives us more time and Ben's offered, they have materials, they have staff, they have other people that can help us implement that so that we can get to more families and try to get them deeper into their process so we're not just having a day of overview and sending them back and then they come back a year later and they still haven't done anything. You know, we're envisioning a session this year that will probably involve at least two days so that families will have an opportunity to sign up and dig deeper with a professional sitting at their table with them so that we can try to get them off the whatever issue it is that's holding them from actually starting to implement um, their, their actual planning or if they're stuck on an issue 
trying to help them get around that. So, you know, those are the kinds of ways where we can, you know, I think with their kind of um, rise to the top, easy ways to partner. But I think um, it's incumbent on all of us with all of these, you know, education series and the other partners we want to start talking to, um, to just keep looking for those kinds of things um, where we might be able to help one another. And like you said, it's a two-way street. You know, making sure that Greenstone wants to support new and beginning farmers. Let's make sure anything we discover or learn or, you know, that we share with them, too. Um, so. Questions for Ben? Uh, Mark? Kind of a question, but a comment, because I'm, I'm thinking in terms of the farming angle. And um, I wonder if, and I don't know that it's been done, but as far as getting more farmer entities to the table to expose this kind of information to um, a situation where you could gather um, you know farmers farm bureau all the local farm bureau uh, maybe presidents vice presidents whatever board members um, young farmers programs are really big and then to get like those type of people Hort society people um, the organic groups of so farmers market groups co-ops um, even the local meat partners that then had meat farms done, that all these people at a table, you know, at a, at a certain given time, to have this type of exposure to that large of a group is going to make more of an impact, I think, on our community. So how do you, you know, how do you get something like that together to make these presentations? Because I see less and less involvement by individual farmers at a lot of these meetings, and I think that's where it needs to go to get them involved, to get more involvement in it. Point. That's a great point, Mark, and I think we need to keep constantly thinking about how we can get those producers and those producer groups and representatives to the table. And you know, we have made some great strides recently with Farm Bureau. Last year, they were a sponsor of our succession planning workshop. They, you know, so we've had some real shifts in that board and their their willingness to cook to collaborate at least in the um, Grand Charters Leelanau board. So, you know, if you have uh, other ideas, I think it's great to share I might be on the Steve board, so I'd be willing to, if you could give me that information when those things come together. Yeah. To get some well, let's, people. yeah. And the, the best way to do that is to, to make sure that Rob or Bill um, know that you hold that position and you're willing to share that information to that group so that we just keep that pipeline going. And, re and really, if, you know, the emails that we send out as invitations to these various uh, discussions are free to distribute. And really, we, we, yeah. we would love to have more. I mean, I mean, unfortunately, people like you move from farmer to, <laughs> to administration, so we keep losing people too. Yeah, but I still am in contact with the farmer, that's and right. I will expose the farmer to that, and that's one of the that's advantages right. that I do have. Uh, rather than just you know being at one farm now, and I, I paid a lot of attention and came to a lot of the meetings that, and I try and expose other farmers to do it to promote them to get them there. But you know, dangling a carrot in front of them is definitely <coughs> probably a good way to right. do it. <laughs> no <laughs> pun intended. Well, <laughs> <it's, you> know, <laughs> frankly, it's, it's part of the reason we're recording these is so that we can put them on up on our website, uh -huh. so that later on, if there's interest, I mean, you can say, hey, you should have been there. Yeah. Go to this website, so look at Ben's talk. Yeah. yeah, we're really doing a lot to improve our Farm Bureau, our Benzie Manistee Farm Bureau website, and get information on there, so we'd be you know, open to getting that information up and on our website also. Yeah, and the easy way to do that is just to have a prominent link for the Food and Farming Network. Then they can go in there and self-select what they want to look at. That's a great point, so, is to link yeah. through to the Food yeah. and Farm Network website. Yeah. Because that's where we don't want to have to post this in 10 different places, but if we put it in one. Right. Okay. And we get your... It's so patient. Yeah. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. No, finish. Oh. Nope. Maybe You're so. good, Sharon. Okay. Um, it just struck me when you were talking about partnering and collaboration with you and the other groups that one of the pieces that might help with even risk mitigation when you're looking at these small hobby farms is um, the piece that has to do with deep consulting. <laughs> uh, because, you know, people might be credit worthy and you know, have all of those parameters, but, you know, I know being in the business that I'm not good at everything. And there's certain areas where, you know, that we're, we're, there's a weak link, you know, and so, having the ability to have deeper consulting um, to help us to 
overcome those hurdles or do what's necessary, I think would be part of that collaboration and also be a, a risk mitigating mitigation factor. Yeah. So you came in a little late. Do you want to introduce yourself just so Ben knows who yeah. you are? Um, I'm Sharon May. We have the May Farm in Benzie County. And I'm also involved in a regional um, collaborative with 16 units of government that are doing their master plans all together using the same consultant. So then we can look at our collective priorities and pick some projects out as a region. And this is um, Benzie and Manistee County. Um, we did apply for a grant for um, a local food, for a food hub. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's a small grant, but we're looking at, at that too. So that's where that, my connection is, you know, that's why I'm here is both of those reasons. No, you're right. I mean, when we meet with borrowers, we're, we're not good at production. We don't know their farm and how to produce something. That's not our expertise. Um, so when we meet with them, you know, we try to work towards a relationship where we, we become a trusted advisor to them and we understand their f process and their farm enough that we can tell them no in a nice way and they understand that we're trying to help them. Um, the other thing that's been beneficial is the ones that don't meet with us is working with Susan's group and, and know their initiatives and finding out these other resources that, you know, you might, may not qualify for us today, but typically you go to FSA, you're going to graduate to us at some point in time. Um, so, you know, knowing where to send people and these other resources has been helpful to us as we've gotten to know what the, those resources are available in this area. Yeah, and for those of you who don't know, um, the the 2020 fund that we've discussed that's been created um, due to Susan's hard work and others and Nick and um, Rob and lots of folks um, uh, at the chamber essentially, um, which is not a, any one program, it's a, gr a group of lenders that needs to encourage um, looks at creative ways to finance people with good ideas and 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 financial challenges and Ben is now you know agreed to you know sort of be a, a, at least a loose knit part of that group so that um, you know if someone might like he just said might not be eligible um, to come straight to Greenstone he can help them um, find that stepping stone so that you know maybe a couple years down the line they can come to Greenstone. That was part of the goal of that project. Right? Exactly. It so it's exciting goals. that yeah. it's exciting that we have you know a new reg a new regional director who's paying attention to that now at Greenstone because that was a goal. Exactly. Any more questions for Ben? Thank you for your time and I appreciate being invited. Thank right. you. Thanks for being here. It's yeah. awesome. From the Northwest Michigan Food and Farming Network, www.foodandfarmingnetwork.org.